Hello everyone and welcome to a most impressive game from round 4 of this year's Akiva Rubinstein Memorial. Uh, we're kind of on a short uh, Vincent Keimer saga. Uh, we've already checked out the three games he played in this event and this is now the fourth one as he's leading the tournament and he's on 100%. And uh, I, I thought about should I show this one, maybe, maybe you know, show some other players, but uh, it is... Uh, well, something that I like to call uh, Bobby Fischer level strong. You know, you, you don't just play good chess, you play uh, immaculate chess. And this is uh, one such case of a game. Uh, Maybe you guys will not agree, but you know this is uh, th this is uh, w w when it's hard to see where your opponent even made a mistake, if if it even is a mistake. Of course, we know that it is because we have access to powerful computers, uh, but to find um, uh, such uh, subtleties over the board is really mind-boggling. So let's check it out. The Vincent. Uh, with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4. We have pawn to d5, c4, and uh, Fedosa uh, accepts uh, uh, the, the queen's gambit. So d captures on c4. We have knight to f3 and knight to f6. e3, we have e6, and bishop captures on c4. So fairly standard stuff here. We have bishop to c5, castles, and pawn to a6. Now preparing to strike with pawn to b5. Bishop back to e2, and now uh, there are... Well, quite a few games actually that reach this position. Knight to b to knight b to d7 is the uh, standard reply here. Uh, one such a game happened in 2017 in London Chess Classic between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. So it is played on uh, on the, e even on the absolute top level. But here we have bishop to d7. There is a game where it has been played, but the game continued with pawn to b3. Here we have d captures and c5, and it is now as of move eight that we have a completely new game. So okay, uh, we have knight to c6, Vladimir. Can continues development uh, and pawn to a3. Of course, uh, knight uh, to c6 prevents pawn to b4, even though you would love to have that c5 pawn defended. But Vincent says, all right, if you can you know, prolong it, but only for a move. If I play b4 next, then my position is just incredible. So bishop captures on c5 and pawn to b4. Going after the bishop, bishop back to e7 and bishop to b2. We have castles kingside and knight b to d2. So uh, pretty equalish position, both players with the bishop pair, both players with two pawns uh, on, on the queen side. Uh, not much to be uh, said uh, uh, about the position. We have knight to a7, freeing up the c6 square for the bishop to grab control of this uh, long diagonal. Knight to c4, and now bishop to c6. We have queen capture c8, the queens come off the board. Rook a capture c8, and rook a to c1. And now just knight to b5, improving the position of the knight, uh, where... Uh, the bishop has access to this long diagonal. We have knight f to e5. Vincent also uh, improves the position of his knight, and uh, this is where uh, the thing. Well, this is where things get really interesting. Here, the, there is tension. Bishop uh, is uh, being attacked by the knight on e5, and both players still have the bishop pair. So, of course, you know that. Um, uh, well, it, it's an open position. Plays on both sides of the board. Those pawns could be uh, easy targets for the bishops, like we've seen in the previous game where they were easy targets for the knights. Uh, but it definitely helps having the bishop pair here. So you should uh, keep the bishop. But the question is, how do you keep it? Well, one way to do it is would, uh, would be to just play bishop back to e8, which is a pretty standard uh, maneuver. You just control uh, some very important squares that the knight also controls, and that's how you save the bishop pair. Another way to do it would be to play bishop to d5, also a nice centralizing move with the bishop. But in the game, uh, Vladimir played bishop to e4, and this is a problem for a very, very particular particular reason, uh, it loses a pawn in the long run. However you play it, it loses a pawn, but it is important to play the next move correctly for Vincent. Now this is extremely difficult, uh, so feel free to pause the video and try to find this uh, idea that Vladimir missed uh, while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on looking at the, this far into the future. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is pawn to f3. That's the that's the move. Now, uh, remember when I said that the bishop would be excellently placed on e8? Well, it seems that the bishop can still reach the d5 square. So what's the problem with the bishop being on d5 now? Well, the problem is that the pawn on f3 now creates support for pawn to e4. And if you play bishop to d5, then look at this. Knight comes to a5, and now what do you play with black? 
it's uh, very, very difficult to find the move. Even if you try to somehow create some counterplay, let's say knight e7, you go after the knight e4, attacks the bishop, and you play knight captures on e5, white will just ignore you. White will play bishop captures on e5, and you still have to do something um, uh, about the bishop, and there's just uh, no good way to, uh, to, to do anything with the bishop. Uh, if you move the bishop from the defense of the b7 pawn, then just knight captures on b7, and if you try to keep it there, well, you just play rook captures on c6. This is the move that... Uh, that is, that is a problem and now after captures and captures you will win the material back and you will just have two versus one uh, on the queen side which is uh, well maybe with engine perfect play it can be held to a draw but uh, in, you know for human standards not so much now it's a very very hard to defend you have to play something uh you you can't uh, really even uh keep the the material for example you play something like rook to eight all of a sudden e4 b5 a pass pawn is created and you're in a lot of trouble so best would be to just give back a material with something like bishop to d6 then knight captures on the eight bishop captures on e5 and knight back to c6 and okay the game continues white still has the um, possibility to push and uh, well the knight can't really stay here otherwise bishop captures on a6 and like i said maybe you can hold it but uh Chances are uh, you, you can't. So after f3, uh, Vladimir said, yeah, that's uh, probably a bit too much. Maybe if I played it on the last move. So he goes back, bishop to g6. And it seems like, uh, okay, now the bishop is uh, out of any uh, tempi, uh, moves, uh, you know, uh, away from that e, e pawn. But king to f2 by Vincent. Uh, we have knight to e8. Okay, preparing bishop to f6. Also, the knight is being remaneuvered to d6. Rook f to d1. Okay, rook captures on d1, doesn't look like much. We have rook captures, knight e to d6, sorry, um, uh, bishop captures on d1 was played. Rook captures was also a possibility, Vincent has other plans for the bishop. Knight e to d6, and now knight to a5. So attacking the b7 pawn, but okay, for the moment the knight is defending it. Bishop to f6, and now pawn to a4. Chasing away the knight, knight back to a7, and now bishop to b3. Uh, we have pawn to b6, attacking the knight, and now knight a to c6. And here, uh, Vladimir is also in a, a bit of a pickle, if you will, because if you if you capture here, then rook captures, and you have big problems here. You're just going to start losing queenside pawns, and that's it. So rook to c8 was played, idea being that, uh, okay, if you capture my knight on a7, I'm going to capture your rook on c1, and after the bishop captures, you're going to lose the defender of d5 knight. I'm going to capture the knight. Uh, so that's the idea. And that's exactly what happens. Vincent plays knight captures on a7. We have rook captures on c1, bishop captures, and bishop captures on e5. Knight back to c6 with an attack on the bishop, and bishop back to c3. Uh, the problem is, it seems uh, almost that you can capture on h2. Uh, but uh, after pawn to g3 and knight f5, preparing pawn captures um, uh, on g4, again, e4 is, is a huge problem. For example, king to g2, bishop captures on g3 and e4, kicks away the knight, wins the bishop, and, uh, and easily winning endgame for white. So that's why bishop to c3, sort of paralyzing the knight, the b4 pawn could be hanging a little bit, but now pawn to e4. And all of a sudden, from what was a double bishop endgame, uh, you have a light square bishop that is completely cut off uh, from uh, from the rest of the game, pretty much. We have king to f8, uh, bishop to e3 going after the b6 pawn, knight to c8 defending, and now just bishop to c4. This was Vincent's long-term plan uh, of why he captured with the bishop on d1 instead of the rook, so he can go after the queenside pawns, and now the bishop pair is just too powerful. It's basically a bishop pair versus a bishop, a bishop pair versus a bishop. The other light square bishop isn't doing all that much. Uh, and here we have knight to e7. Uh, again, you could try something like pawn to a5, uh, saying, okay, let's uh, maybe trade down a little bit. The problem is bishop a6, uh, attacking the knight, which is undefended, and you're going to lose the b6 pawn. And... Uh, I mean, there's not much you can try. For example, knight to d6, bishop capture some b6. You can even play a capture some b4. It looks like a very strong pawn. The problem is bishop to d3 will always guard the queening square, and there's just not much you can do. Like uh, bishop to c5 will win the knight. You can even play b3. Let's say bishop captures, attacks the uh, king, king to e8, and now something like bishop to e5, b2. 
uh, the pawn is already here, but the light square bishop is locked out of the game and bishop d3, and there's nothing here for black. So you have to face reality. After bishop to c4, knight d7 by Vladimir, knight captures, king captures, and bishop captures on b6. We have bishop captures on b4 and bishop captures on a6, uh, winning the... Uh, the last remaining defender and now it's uh, it's all of a sudden an equal position but the light score bishop still out of the game and vincent has this beautiful outside pass pawn reminds you of uh maybe a fisher versus larson game one of their uh candidates match uh, where Fisher had the bishop pair, I think, tucked away like this, and then was escorting the past a pawn up the board uh, against Larson's queen. Okay, here it's not a queen, here is the bishop pair, but yeah, for some reason, uh, reminds you of that. Okay, king to d6, uh, we have bishop to b5, and Fisher also had a rook, uh, uh, you know, to complement the bishop pair. Uh, we have pawn to f6, and now king to e2. And uh, Vincent really burned a lot of time on this move. You can see that he's uh, down to 12 uh, minutes on the clock, and where after king to e2, he's now all of a sudden on 1 minute uh, 30 seconds on the clock. So he wanted to be sure, because there's still 5 more moves to be made until time control is reached, uh, and uh, okay, you know your position is winning. Uh, bishop to c5, offering a trade of bishops. Bishop to a5, no reason to, to rush anything. We have pawn to e5, king to d2 time to get the king into the game as well bishop to f7 king to c2 and now pawn to h5 with bishop to e1 making room for the pass pawn to be pushed forward pawn to g5 with pawn to h3 and pawn to g4 trying to create some counterplay but uh, yeah not gonna not gonna happen even if captures on g4 vincent not uh, uh, not really reluctant to uh, mess up in sp his pawn structure to win material King to c7, and now bishop to a5 with check. We have king to c8, bishop back to d2, and now bishop to e7. We have pawn to a5, and bishop to e6. Uh, okay, the bishop is finally back in the game, but this pawn is now unstoppable. We have bishop to e3, king to c7, and pawn to a6. We have bishop to c8, uh, and now bishop to c4. And he was in this position on move 48 that Vladimir Fedosev uh, resigned the game as there is nothing more to be done here. Uh, the, there is no stopping the pass pawn, however you play it. Uh, for those, uh, some of you said in the previous video that uh, I should have um, explained the, the, re, uh, the position of resignation as it's not all that clear. So I will uh, demonstrate here, for example, how do you, how do you stop the pass pawn? Uh, obviously, you have to control the a8 square somehow. Well, let's say you play king to b8, uh, pawn to a7 with check, king to a8, and now bishop to d5. There, there's no way to control the d5 square uh, that the light square bishop will use. That's the problem. And even if you play something like bishop to b7, uh, you can even trade captures, captures, and now you just start marching your king up the board. There is no defense against that. If the king moves, you promote the pawn. And if something like bishop uh, here, you just play bishop to c5, you take away d7 square from the bishop. Now the bishop cannot move, otherwise you just play bishop e7 and you collect all of the pawns. Uh, again, if the king moves, you just promote the pawn to a queen, and if uh, black just repeats, uh, then you just march your king up the board, uh, play bishop e7, trade off the bishops, win these pawns, and then promote all of the pawns. You, you could have even uh, three queens here, or three knights, and checkmate your opponent with three knights. That's also very impressive and humiliating. Uh, so yeah, uh, very nicely done by Vincent. He's on four out of four, and he will face Radoslav Wojtaszek in the next uh, game. So looking forward to that one in this short uh, Vincent saga. Uh, he is now up 18 points uh, this month, and he is up to 27-37, so some 15 points shy away from the uh, top 10. We'll see if he can continue this as he is really uh, uh, on a roll here. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I would like to thank Michael Bowers, uh, Carmen Polifronio, Robert Stedelman, um, Jack Mihoff, and GrzniChessFestival.org.gg for your contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you soon, continuing to check up on your wonderful suggestions uh, and whatever else happens in the chess world. Uh, so thank you all. I will see you soon, and have an excellent rest of your day.